Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139. Beth Drew of Milton is a Republican candidate in the 43rd Assembly District. Beth, welcome to uh, Wisconsin Eye. Thank you. Well, I know you're a town supervisor, but you're running for the Assembly. So just give us a short summary of what you think are your top one or two campaign issues, please. Well, I would say that COVID, of course, is one of the very top things. And quite honestly, the state's response and uh, Department of Workforce Development and what that has looked like for our constituents, not only in the 43rd, but across Wisconsin. Well, has, uh, do you don't think uh, the residents of the 43rd have been well served by the DHS response or can you elaborate a little bit? I'm a business owner in, in the city of Milton, have been for the past 22 years as well as I hold a, a nursing degree. And I have 20 employees that um, during the shutdown, we closed on March 20th mm -hmm. and reopened on May 27th. And during that time, I struggled with my own um, trying to get into uh, file unemployment and then likewise helping some employees through this as we were um, hunkering down uh, during COVID. Most recently, I'm still talking to constituents as I'm out and about in the community that have not received, um, not only have not received their unemployment, but have yet to receive um, any help in that area. And so this has been a huge concern and um, an area that I'm focusing on that I would like to see uh, some modifications, not only some modifications, but to, to make some changes to that program. Okay, let's let's talk about the pandemic a bit. Senator Kappinga and Representative Bourne have a bill that says that businesses and organizations like yours that try to comply with COVID-19 protocols should be immune from COVID lawsuits. Do you think that uh, could could you vote for that bill? I would I would need to see more information about this, but yes, I, I agree that frivolous lawsuits, if that's what we're talking about here, are are costly and definitely for any of our businesses that we. Uh, need to be able to do business in the best manner that we can. So in, in my instance, again, um, we were able to reopen on May 27th, provide gating. It's a daycare and preschool. I don't know if I explained that earlier. Um, so we were able to bring back in smaller measures as we were opening uh, the state back up uh, to be able to have um, hand sanitizing and um, we're doing temperature taking and a COVID response sheet that is available on my on my website as a public document for our, for our staff and also for our children. So am I in favor of that? Yes, um, in that our businesses have to be able to, to operate so that our infrastructure of Wisconsin can continue to move forward. With your healthcare background, um, do you think the role that we've seen hospitals play nationally in treating COVID-19 patients if you're voting, if you're in the legislature voting on the next state budget, do hospitals deserve an even greater priority than they may have in the in the current budget? I do think that that's important. We have to look at not only how um, our hospitals are being uh, helped in, in, in that respect, but also our first responders. Um, I know that our fire and EMS services have had to make modifications, significant modifications in how they're doing business and operating as well. This has made a huge impact. So maybe it's not only how uh, reimbursement in it is, is handled for hospitals, but maybe also looking to our insurance companies and what that might look like for them. On September 28th, the governor has a decision. He can let lapse the statewide face mask edict or he can extend it. What do you wish he would do? Ultimately, I wish that he would let it lapse. Um, I am not interested in a one size fits all for our entire state. I do feel that it's necessary that we look at this regionally and what we're, what we're seeing for numbers um, very scientifically as well uh, to, to see what works for the individual entities. Well, uh, one more question on the pandemic. There are sure. fears that it could mean we won't collect uh, tax revenues that had been projected. So. If I make up a number, of, uh, we don't collect a, a billion dollars in tax revenues. You're a member of the legislature. Do we look to fill that shortfall by uh, cutting spending or raising taxes or fees? 
Well, that's a really good question. I do feel in, in any instance that we need to be looking at cutting spending where it's it's unnecessary, of course. Um, I will tell you that we were pleasantly, um, we were, we were, we were happy that we, we received uh, the tax dollars that we did in the most recent round, um, hoping that that's the case, um, that, or that that's not the case, that, that we would see the same numbers or even better um, with, the, with the, next, um, the next round of, of taxing. That would be, um, of course, so wherever possible, we need to look at a hybrid of this um, to cut spending whenever necessary. Okay, uh, new subject. The the national debate over policing reforms had landed in Wisconsin's front door with Kenosha. There's a bunch of different proposals out there. The governor has some, Republican Senator Wangard has some, the speaker is going to form a task force. Are there any specific policing reforms that you should you think should be enacted, Beth? Specific policing reforms, I cannot say that I, I do have any in particular. I will tell you that um, that the specific nine that the that the governor is proposing in any in any profession we have um, so many positives and in all areas we have areas that need some work and so regionally again I would say that we need to look at what education looks like and and making sure that the toolboxes and resources are are full for for our police force um, it's very important that we maintain safety of course but at, but knowing that by and large we have um, wonderful people on staff. Um, and and protecting us as neighboring states including a neighbor your neighbor Illinois as they uh, legalize medical and recreational marijuana what's what's your position on that medical marijuana is something that I do think is important for um, certain cases and and it's important for physicians to be able to to work through that with their patients I would need to look at other areas in terms of, of um, legalizing marijuana in particular. I've been contacted by several constituents and this is an area that I would like to look at um, what the economic impact might be for Wisconsin at the same time. Um, there, are, there are just many factors and so I can't give you a blanket answer for that, but medically speaking, I think it is. In the debate in the Capitol over who should draw the next congressional and legislative district lines, the governor is proposing a People's Maps Commission that would then draw lines and forward it to the legislature to be enacted. The Constitution says uh, the party in power should draw the lines. Who's uh, who, who's right? Who's right? Well, I, I believe there's a hybrid approach to all things. Um, and in, in this instance, I, I'm interested in exploring a commission, whether it be the one that Governor Evers is proposing. I can't say that I'm completely in favor of that, but I do think it's important for us to, to look at how this is happening and that there is a good representation. So. Um, okay, put on your town supervisor hat because here's my next question. For 20 years, because we're a high property tax state, yeah. local governments like the town board you serve on have been living with property tax caps and limits. Should those limits be continued? Well, I will tell you that it is difficult to, to operate within the confines of that. Um, knowing that what our options may be at this point. Um, somehow we have been able to work through this. And, and so I'm feeling um, that there, there does need to be something that is done, uh, whether that's highway aid or what that looks like for us, that needs to change. But um, in terms of the caps, I, I think that for the foreseeable future, let's keep them in place, but knowing that something needs to be worked through. Well, let's pursue that a bit. Should that something include alternative sources of revenues for local governments? I mean, uh, uh, there's a plan in the legislature that would let Milwaukee, after a referendum, adopt a half cent sales tax. Do local governments need something to not be so reliant on the property tax? I think that there is, it, it, it again, is gonna have to be looked at regionally, what that looks like for everyone, um, whether it be, uh, uh, a slight increase to the sales tax, it, it potentially, I'm, I'm in favor of looking at cutting spending before we would increase taxes, but at the same time, um, know that something has to give. What's the biggest squeeze on your town budget? Uh, what, what, what do you supervisors really worry about funding? What, what service do you worry about funding in the future? I'd give you the pat answer of keeping the lights on, but let's just go with um, our fire department and the way that we're structured is a, is a very, so protection for fire and EMS services and then our highways are the, okay. is the next. 
When you mentioned highways, Governor Evers uh, last year recommended raising the gas tax, which is gas tax is now 30.9 cents a gallon. Could you vote to raise the gas tax to stabilize how we pay for highways and bridges? Without a doubt, we have to look at some sort source sort of um, sustainable funding. And what that looks like, again, I can't give you that answer in terms of, yes, this is absolutely the way that it should go. I think we need to look to first at what we have for spending in terms of the, the highway department and, and whether there is anything there. I'm, I'm not telling you that there is at this point to trim. Um, but then knowing that um, if that is the only sustainable way that something has to be done and whether that's, that approach is potentially raising a portion of the gas tax or, or what that might be, we have to do something. Again, given your experience with a local government, when, when a school board or local government plans a major public works project, should they have to give a preference to uh, Wisconsin businesses? I am all about looking to having competition, if you will. And so a preference to Wisconsin company is, is a good idea. I would say that oftentimes if we have to do that, that may not be the best option. Um, looking to maybe what we're potentially talking about is closer to state lines where it's going to be more cost effective for them to bring in high, high cost equipment and so forth to do these projects. So I don't know in terms of the 43rd if we're necessarily talking about that or if you're looking at that statewide. So again, a one size fits all approach um, is not necessary in this instance, but um, is something to be looked at. Well, we've talked about a lot of issues. Is there any other issue that's important to your campaign that we haven't hit on? yet? If, if I would, not, honestly, I would no. say COVID-19 and, and the health and, and, and um, the health of our families. You know, when we're talking about almost any of these issues, Steve, we're talking about um, at the root of it, mental health and what this pandemic has done, not only to our children and families, but how, how they're performing professionally. And so I think it's important for us to look at what that is and realize that as we're out and about that we've got to to be cognizant of what this is what this pandemic is doing this is just the tip of the iceberg this this pandemic will will affect us for years to come economically emotionally and physically and so we have to be able to to operate within um, no, that knowledge final question uh, you want to highlight differences with uh, you and your the democratic incumbent that you're up against on November 3 whether I want to highlight the differences, I can tell you that there really are not that many differences. Um, at the root of it, with my nursing experience and my small business experience, um, also with town local municipal government, I will be able to, with um, the backing of my Republican Party, to be able to accomplish many things for the 43rd and for the state of Wisconsin. And during these times, especially, this is extremely important. Beth Drew of, Mil of Milton, excuse me, is a Republican seeking uh, election on the in the 43rd Assembly District. The election is November 3. Beth, thank you very much for talking to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you so much for having me. Have a good day and stay safe. Thank you. Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139.